Hi everybody, my name is Joey Lin here at Think Prep, and today I will be reacting to high school graduation speeches. Since this is graduation season 2021, I figured now would be the time to look at some of the graduation speeches we've had throughout the years, so we'll be looking at some funny ones and some serious ones. So without further ado, let's get started. Care for some strawberries? You are probably wondering why I have these, and wondering if there is enough for all of you. There may not be enough, but you already have your own. These are not ordinary strawberries, they are jewels. This one represents sweat. This one represents dirt. This one, I think this is the blazing sun. Oh, and these are aches and pains. <clears throat> In other words, they are my motivators. I am motivated by the sweat that drips from my face under the beating sun. I am motivated by my mother's hands that are slowly losing feeling from years of arduous work in the dirt and fields. And I am motivated by the endless support that I have been given. <clears throat> my name is Brenda Alvarez Lagunas, and I stand before you honored to be the valedictorian of Mulberry Senior High School, class of 2019. My motivation is rooted in fields of strawberries, in the fields of blueberries, cucumbers, sweet potatoes. Yes, my motivation has been rooted in my migrant culture. I am a daughter of two farm workers who have worked tirelessly from sunup to sundown. As a young child, I remember being in the fields and watching my parents glaze in sweat and their clothes dripping wet as if it just rained on them. Despite the beaming sun and the body aches and pains, their smiles shone with every bucket of produce they carried. I remember picking crops with them after school or on the weekends, and even I, a young, energetic youth, could not always handle the aches and pains from bending over or the intense heat that embraced us. The moments I remember spending together as a family are stretched thin. As much as my parents wanted to provide their children with attention and care, they could not. Oof, I, I have an idea of where this is going. Um... I knew that as soon as she brought up the strawberries and started like labeling them one by one, um, it was kind of clear where she was going with that. When I was younger, I used to think like, okay, people who work picking vegetables and produce on the farms, like it can't be that hard, but kind of as I've gotten older, like just working in an office job, you start to get aches and pains just from sitting around. So like that whole aches and pains line, yeah, that definitely, um, that definitely meant something. A phrase that always touched their lips was, Tu única salida de este estilo de vida es a través de una educación. Your only way out of this lifestyle is through an education. This lifestyle encompassed homes that were run down, front doors that did not close, no windows, gaps between the floors and walls. But these were the places I called home. Um, so one of the biggest things, like this was something that was kind of said to me when I was little too, like, okay, if you want to make your future, you have to go to a four-year university, you have to go to college. And then they did this whole like chart showing like, if you only have a high school diploma, you make X amount of dollars in your lifetime. If you have a college diploma though, you make, you know, $300,000 more or something like that. I don't remember the exact number. Um, but then more recently, they've done a lot of research on how four-year institutions can really help families. And it turns out that the colleges or the people that universities can help the most are people who exist in the bottom 10% of American society. By going to a highly selective or a well-reputed private school, the kids in the bottom 10% of uh, socioeconomic status can launch themselves into sometimes the top 20 or even the top 10%. So we call this social mobility. So this is really true for families who are... Uh, uh, children of immigrants or children whose families are uh, below the national poverty line. So education is really important. We shared the home with other families and were often greeted with unexpected guests. Mice, cockroaches, even slugs. <clears throat> Conditions worsened during my seventh grade year when my father was deported. We asked churches and family for aid, but before we knew it, we were swimming in an ocean of debt. The chance of being able to afford a post-secondary education grew slimmer. Current statistics say that I should not make it. I am from a senior, 
I am from a single parent household and, we, and will be the first in my family to graduate from high school. My parents were only able to obtain, thank you. My parents were only able to obtain a fourth grade education and my older sister Maribel got pregnant and decided to drop out. I have seen firsthand the challenges of not having an education, which is why I use all of these adversities as motivators for myself. I share this with you in the hope that you realize that no matter what stereotypes or statistics are placed on you, you can overcome them. This has been my motivation. Now let's talk about yours. One of the best things that we have in place in the higher education system is that low-income families can get financial aid. On the opposite end of that spectrum, though, is there is a lot of schools that try to trap students into uh, taking out loan, massive loan amounts to get a four-year education. So if you're one of those kids out there who feels like they do need a substantial amount of scholarship money to go to college, please look for schools that meet 100% of demonstrated need. And one of the best websites you can go to is collegegreenlight.com. They have a list of schools that are really, really generous with financial aid. And also your local state institutions and your local community colleges, they're great with grant money. And that can help you afford college. Um, and that can help you afford college. You don't have to go into six figures worth of debt to get an education. I stand before you tonight as the 2019 valedictorian. This time last year, I found out that I was in the running for this title. It was then that I decided I wanted it. So I worked hard for it. I sacrificed for it. And yes, I stressed for it. Look at all the cords he has on his neck. One's probably for like volunteer, one's probably for honor society, one's probably for like top math student. I wonder like he has like 20 cords on his neck. And I got it. And at our senior award ceremony, it felt so good when I heard my name announced with this title. It's so good. For about 15 seconds. Yeah, 15 seconds of my heart racing and my adrenaline pumping. 15 seconds of, yeah, I won. 15 seconds of being at the top of the pile of all my accomplishments. And it felt euphoric. But there must come a 16th second. And on that 16th second, sat down in my seat, I looked at my silver stole that says valedictorian, and I thought, that's it? <laughs> what just happened? Why, why am I not feeling anything else? Uh, to be honest, I, I don't even know what I was expecting. A parade of balloons to drop? So I think it was Time Magazine that did an article that was following a bunch of valedictorians from their high schools and tracked them over, I think, 10 or 15 or even 20 years. And it turns out that the, um, and it turns out that the outcomes of these valedictorians, like where they went in life, was statistically no different from any other student who went to that high school. So I do think that there's this like mad rush for like, okay, I need to be number one. I need to take the most AP and honors classes. When in reality, all it does is like give you that, like he said, 15 seconds worth of like euphoria. Um, at the end of the day, if you're gunning for number one, you kind of have to sacrifice certain things that you may not have had to sacrifice otherwise. For example, I remember in my high school, the girl who was gunning to be valedictorian, she ended up taking honors art because she knew it would give her a grade bump, but the rest of us were like, well, we don't really care that much about art. That's not a priority for us. Um, so yeah, moral of the story, like don't sacrifice your own personal wants and desires for the sake of a slightly higher GPA. Like we're talking fractions of a point here when we're talking about valedictorian. And that's why a lot of high schools don't do ranking anymore. Even if you beg your guidance counselor to figure out where you rank in the class, they're not going to tell you. Because, you know, we're hearing about people getting into fights, beating up, lawsuits. There's a lawsuit. I forget what state. Um, I know there was Becky with the bad grades a couple years ago. But there was another lawsuit recently for a girl who was number three in her class. A parade of balloons to drop? Or, or maybe I was hoping that all of my problems would fade away in comparison to this amazing achievement. But none of that happened, not even in my heart. I felt nothing. I was shocked. 
This was a huge problem for me, and I needed to figure out why. So here was my thought process. Working hard is good. It is, in fact, biblical. But it should not be done for the sole purpose of a goal's sake at the expense of relationship with others. Huh. Looking back on this year, I realized that the stress of this year for this goal in a five-minute speech was paid for with the lack of attending to relationships in my life. A lesson learned and self-reflection accomplished. Now, I would like you, my fellow classmates, to do some self-reflecting. I would like you to take a moment to fill in a different thing that you strive for and you focus on. Something that you thought was the end-all, be-all. Perhaps it was sports. Perhaps it was fine arts, academics, getting into a particular school, an unhealthy social life, social media, or video games. Friends, we are about to launch into life, and we haven't messed anything up yet. That's a lie. He's probably messed up a lot already. Um, I think it's interesting that he's already notating. It's like, obviously, he can say that because he's a valedictorian now. It's like, oh my gosh, I worked so hard and I had to give up a lot of social things. But I really do think on the other side, like when you're looking at college admissions, there is that huge, what's the word, um, stigma, stereotype maybe, where if they know somebody's valedictorian, then immediately their thought goes to, okay, how are they cutthroat? How did they get to that spot, right? Because the only way you can get to that point part is like maybe the way we see it in the movies by being a little bit is conniving the best word being a little bit sneaky being a little bit like putting other things aside and on the flip side then we have a lot of students who value kindness or friendship or community building and those are traits that colleges care about much more right they don't want a bunch of kids that are conniving in college they want a bunch of kids that are helping build a community and making things every making things fun for everybody so that's my thought there Good morning, everyone. Oh, wow. Bass voice. On behalf of the class of 2015, I would like to welcome all faculty, alumni, friends, family, and distinguished guests to the 87th commencement ceremony of La Plata High School. Well, graduates, we made it. As a group, we did indeed start from the very bottom. Now it looks like the whole team's here. Think about how far we have come individually and as a class. Looking back to freshman year, it seems like it was just yesterday. There was the first football game, the first class, the first girlfriend, the second girlfriend, the third girlfriend, to figuring out that you were the problem. Yet, our hearts were paired, and we grew physically and mentally. Think about the music and fashion trends that we lived through, and all the different dance moves that were created. You had the jerk, the duggy, the whip. Does anyone remember that song, Friday, by Rebecca Black? Mine was now the mocker right now. Tuesday. It's funny how things change. This class of 2015 has undoubtedly been one of the most successful and outstanding classes in the Plata High School's history. I feel like you just have to say that every year. Like, you can't just be like, this class was the mediocre class. We accumulated a whopping $12,637,544 in scholarship money. Um... It's really interesting with this $12 million fact, like, is that the money they could actually get? Because one person could theoretically apply to 20 different schools and get a million dollars worth of scholarship money, but they can't use it all. Um, and there are schools that actually force students to apply to schools randomly. One is Arcadia University. I met the director of admissions once, and he's like, well, people are just applying to us because we're first on the Common App list. And so we just get a bunch of applications from nowhere, and we know these kids aren't attending. They just want the scholarship money. So this is kind of a trend that's been going on in college admissions within the past, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. In our years at La Plata, our athletic programs brought home 10 SMAC titles, nine regional titles, and three state titles. Our very 
various student organizations outdid themselves and proudly represented our school. Unplugged, its academic, MESA, math team, and many more flourished over the past four years, winning countless awards. Yet, our four years at La Plata were no walk in the park. Every student has experienced his or her fair share of disappointment and upset, including me. I'll never forget the day I saw the Spider-Man movie for the first time. I leapt off the couch and said to my mom, when I grow up, I want to be Spider-Man. She looked at me and said, Ryan, grow up. You graduate next week. Things might not always go the way you plan, but I know we can all agree that this class is resilient. We survived an earthquake, two blackouts, and Ebola. The fact that we made it here, decorated with these awards and accomplishments, is just a testament to our perseverance and commitment to excellence. Graduates, you are all done. I give him a B. I think his jokes are okay. They're a little bit played out. Maybe because it's six years later, maybe because it's 2021, but I think his jokes could have been better. Yeah, and if Ebola was the worst thing in 2015, well, guess what? You have something in store for you. Begin by saying congratulations. At first, this commencement speech, captured on shaky cell phone video and delivered by Matt Easton, may sound like others you've heard until the four minute mark. As such, I stand before my family, friends, and graduating class today to say that I am proud to be the gay son of God. They kind of gave it away earlier in the news article because it said it. Um, they, whoever edited the news clip did a no bueno job. Commencement coming out. I don't know. Not sure if I wanted to spoil the punchline. Gay son of God. Coming out is hard enough on its own, yet Easton did it in front of thousands of people at a school founded by the Mormon Church. For this political science valedictorian at Brigham Young University, there was no better stage to deliver his message. I am not broken. I am loved and important to the plan of our great creator. Each of us are. The speech was surprising to many. That's because the Mormon church considers same-sex marriage a serious transgression. And while Brigham Young's honor code does not ban gay students, it does forbid all forms of physical intimacy that give expression to homosexual feelings. I've always wondered about schools that have that sort of stuff. And then this is not just a thing about like gay rights or like straight people rights, but like how are they supposed to prevent kids from doing college kid things? Like, are they going to like put security cameras in the dorm room? Like, how are they going to enforce this stuff? Um, but yeah. Easton ran his speech by the dean's office and it was approved. Even some of his relatives didn't know he was gay until this moment. Four years ago, it would have been impossible for me to imagine that I would come out of my entire college. It is a phenomenal feeling, and it is a victory for me in and of itself. In Utah, the debate over faith and sexuality has gradually shifted in recent years. Each summer, the state hosts Love Loud, a music festival to show support for LGBTQ youth who are far more likely to attempt suicide than their straight peers. Love Loud was created by Dan Reynolds. So this is interesting because when I graduated from college, there wasn't such thing as a valedictorian thing. Even when we had like the small groups, because I went to a school that had like 2,000 kids in each grade. And even when we did just the school of communication that I was in, we didn't have any sort of valedictorian. So I'm kind of confused how like BYU, which is, I, it's a pretty big school. Like how did they find that one person across like hundreds of majors to give that person that one like um, title. So I don't know, anybody else who's graduated from college, did you have a valedictorian speak at your graduation? Um, I found that kind of confusing, um, but good for him. Like going to a church where he doesn't feel welcome and definitely isn't supported, that's, that's kind of a scary, scary, scary thing. And I thought he kept his composure really well giving that speech and not like breaking down. Because if I were doing that speech, I would have been probably in tears or hyperventilating or something. So good for you.
One of my major goals in high school is to become valedictorian and give one of the best valedictorian speeches out there. And you know what? I'm going to do it. It makes it sound so easy. I'm just going to be valedictorian. Good morning, good evening, or good night to those who are watching this video. Our 2020 graduating year didn't go as planned. As you can see, instead of talking to a crowd, I'm talking to a bunch of empty chairs. But that's life. Sometimes you have to work around tough situations and take the positives from it. Think about it like this. We are the only class who didn't have a prom. We are the only class to have our graduation online. My drama class is the only class who didn't get to put on a production this year. We are the only class that didn't get to do a senior prank, although I'm pretty sure the VPs are happy about that one. What I'm trying to say is our class is unique, and all the things we miss only makes our grade 12 year more memorable. Take a look back at the four years of high school, whether that be at SJB or any other school. Look at the relationships you made, the relationships you lost, a life-changing conversation with a teacher or a friend. All these experiences taught us so much, for our future and the next chapter of our life. High school can be summed up in one word, and that's growth. We grew physically and mentally into the person we never thought we would be. When I walked into high school, I was, well, let my grade nine self to the talking. At the end of the day, I'm kind of scared going into high school. I don't know what to expect. There's so many different people that could have so many different opinions on you, and it's just, it's, it's mind-blowing to think that I'm already in high school. I'm just going to keep to my morals, work hard, and see where that takes me. Let's be honest. What a we really mature ninth grader. We didn't know what, what to expect. Heck? It was a whole new ball game, and we were forced to adapt to it. To be yourself is the most important thing in high school. Going into high school, all we wanted to do was fit in. We tried so hard to please others, and it became exhausting. I was put into so many situations that I wasn't prepared for. We act off impulse and start doing anything just to fit in. After four years, I think we can all agree that fitting in is overrated. I've been at the top of the totem pole and at the bottom. And I can truly tell you that popularity is not worth it. Popularity is filled with drama and negativity. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Being yourself may be uncomfortable at times. But I can tell you from experience that it's worth it, as it will make you happier. And that's what's most important. There's bigger problems in the world. Look at me right now. I'm talking to a camera rather than all of you. When we walked through those doors on Friday before March break, we didn't know that that was going to be the last time we would walk out an SJB student. The last time we would have lunch with our friends. The last time we would hear the teacher say, have a good weekend. The last time we would fist bump Ravi in the hallways. And to think that most of us skipped that day. Sometimes you never know how important something is until it So it's interesting after having watched all these speeches, especially because they're all listed as valedictorian speeches, and it makes me wonder, like, why is it that the quote-unquote smartest kid in the grade gets to give a speech motivating everybody for their future? And after having watched all of these, it's almost like they're trying to give me advice that they've learned from taking really, really hard classes. And something just doesn't line up there. And so I wonder why we have this tradition right now in schools. I know a lot of schools do this. Not every school does. So I'm curious how your high school graduation went. I'm personally of the belief that I don't think the valedictorian should give the speech. I think it should be somebody else who's demonstrated like high moral standing or who uh, is a community builder and it shouldn't be a popularity contest either it should be somebody who's like voted on by the teachers or finding some way to like lift up a voice of somebody who's truly motivational in the high school community so leave a comment below if you have any sort of idea of how you'd like to revamp high school graduation speeches so that's those are my thoughts on high school graduations. If you have any awesome graduation stories, feel free to leave it below in the comment section. And if you found this video fun, give our like button a little boop and subscribe to our channel.